I found this Celestron StarSense Explorer LT 80 millimeter AZ telescope on sale for only $169. So let's open it up, put it together and try it out and see how it performs. pretty easy to set up. It came with written instructions on how to assemble it and it came with an Amiki erect image diagonal and it came with the Celestron 10 millimeter eyepiece, a Celestron 25 millimeter eyepiece and a Celestron 2 time Barlow and it came with a red dot finder and it came with the star sense. The star sense is how we're going to guide the telescope with my phone and I have to first download the StarSense app to my phone and then put in this code that it came with and then we'll do that after it gets dark and it's clear and try that out and unfortunately it's cloudy tonight so we can't try it out tonight but tomorrow we'll try it out. The first thing you have to do when you get a new telescope is you have to line up the finder scope with the telescope and you do that during the day. But first, this telescope came with a red dot finder which runs off of a CR2032 battery and they ship it with a piece of plastic right here to prevent the battery from discharging. So just pull that piece of plastic out and then we'll go outside and line up the red dot finder with the telescope. First, make sure these silver screws that attach the red dot finder to the telescope are nice and snug because you don't want this moving once you get it aligned with the telescope. Next, turn this knob until you hear a click and that turns the red dot on. And then you use this knob to move it left and right and this knob to go up and down to adjust it to line it up with the telescope. So let's go outside and do that. Now we're ready to line up the red dot finder with the telescope. Use your lowest magnification eyepiece, in this case 25 millimeters, and get your object in the red dot finder. Get that red dot where it's pointed at whatever you've chosen. I'm choosing the peak of the roof of that cabin a mile or so away. And when the red dot is pointed at that, and it's not projecting, it's just reflecting a red dot back to your eye to show you where it's pointed. Then go to your eyepiece and using your azimuth and altitude adjustments, get that in the center of your eyepiece. And when it's in the center of your eyepiece, lock down those two knobs because you don't want the telescope moving. Then go back to your red dot finder and at that point you'll need to use the up and down and left and right knobs until you have the red dot directly on the top of the peak of the roof or whatever your chosen object is. And then go back to the eyepiece to make sure nothing moved. And make sure the object is still in the center of the eyepiece. If it isn't, get it back in there. And then go back to the red dot. And when they're both precisely on that object in the center of the eyepiece and the red dot is pointed directly at that, then you're all lined up. Now I'm going to look at the waning crescent moon. I have not put the star sense in yet. I did download it to my phone and we'll use that this evening. But right now I'm just going to use the red dot finder to get the waning crescent moon in here. Very pretty when it's at this phase, but it's very thin. And I can't make out much detail in it, but very pretty. 
But let's see if increasing the magnification helps. This 25 millimeter eyepiece gives me 36 times magnification. And we can try this 10 millimeter, which will give me 90 times magnification. And don't forget to refocus when you put a different eyepiece in. Mm. I still can't make out any detail, but it's very pretty. And when it gets dark, we'll look at some deep sky objects and we'll try out the star sense. Okay, the sun just went down, so it's not quite dark, but I can easily find Venus with the red dot finder. So I wanted to have a look at Venus. First with 36 times magnification. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration, which means some false colors, which you get with achromatic refractors, although this is a very long refractor, so it's not a lot, but now, and you can't touch this thing or it moves. Let's try the 90 times magnification with the 10 millimeter eyepiece. And refocus. And now there is a lot of chromatic aberration. But that's what you get with an achromat. In a refractor at this price point, it's to be expected, but I just wanted to check it out. And what a beautiful sunset. When it gets dark, Hopefully it'll stay clear and we can look at some deep sky objects and try out the star sense. Okay, I got the star sense lined up. It's pretty straightforward. It has instructions and little videos if you get stuck. Okay, let's have a look at Saturn. So loosen the azimuth and just follow these arrows. Okay, all right, should be in there. Let's have a look. All right. Okay, it's in there. It's tiny, <laughs> so let's magnify, because you want to magnify the planets as much as possible. Let's take the 25 millimeter eyepiece out and try the 10 millimeter, which is still only 90 times magnification, which is not much, but that's all the eyepieces they give you. I mean, it's an 80 millimeter refractor, so it's tiny. But let's go back to the 36 time magnification and look at an object that doesn't require a lot of magnification. Let's try M2. It's a globular cluster in Aquarius, which is not that far away. Okay, when it turns green, it should be in there, so let's have a look. Okay, I can see it. It's tiny, though. Globular clusters you want to magnify also. Okay, now let's look at M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. I'm just facing that way. because it's big and I won't have to magnify a lot. Okay, when the bullseye turns green, then lock down your azimuth and altitude knobs, and then try not to touch it because this thing is not very stable. 
Okay, yeah, there it is. Beautiful. Nice. Very nice. Okay, I know something that's perfect for a little 80 millimeter refractor, and that's the double cluster in Perseus, which is an NGC object. It's actually two objects, and one of them is NGC 869. So let's put that in and have a look at that. Okay. Nice. Very, very nice. Okay, and for our last object, let's have a look at M45, the Pleiades, which is big, and it's another object that's good for small refractors. Okay, very nice, but it's very hard to get this thing to stay still and you can't touch it, but the optics are nice, very pretty. For around $200, you get a lot with the Celestron StarSense Explorer LT-80AZ. You get two eyepieces, a diagonal, a decent 80 millimeter refractor, a red dot binder, a mount, and a tripod. And you get the StarSense dock. I applaud Celestron for coming up with this great technology allowing you to easily locate objects in the night sky, just using the dock and your own smartphone. The optics were not bad at all. There was some chromatic aberration, but that was to be expected for an achromatic refractor, and it wasn't too bad. Mostly the view through the telescope was decent, especially for such a low-priced instrument. The two eyepieces were of low quality, as was the Amiki diagonal, and the focuser is plastic, and the Barlow was useless. All those things were to be expected on such a low-priced telescope. But I wish Celestron had made the mount a little sturdier. It constantly moved and wobbled if I dared touch it, which is unavoidable at times, and I'd be afraid to take this out if it had been windy. And unfortunately, the way the telescope is designed, you can't just put it on something more stable because the telescope doesn't have rings or a dovetail. So it's limited to being mounted on a yoke mount like this. And at this price, it wouldn't even be worth it to add a dovetail and rings. So for the price, it's a decent enough telescope for a beginner. I'm glad the box didn't say 500 times magnification, <laughs> but I do take issue with the enticing statements on the box that say, no experience required. Finding objects couldn't be easier. Precisely locate Jupiter, Saturn, Mars, and more, even from the city. I don't think that's true. Those are probably the only things you'll see from the city with such a small telescope and no knowledge about the night sky. Yes, the star sense helps you locate objects with your phone, but you do need some experience to know what to look for if you want to see anything other than the moon and the planets. Yes, I could see M2 in this telescope, but I know what to look for, and I'm very experienced, and I live in a rural area with dark skies. I didn't use this telescope in the city, but I would think it would be challenging. So it's an okay telescope, but I think the star sense gives people a false impression of what the telescope is capable of. It would probably be better if the telescope didn't come with the star sense, so that someone who is interested in becoming an amateur astronomer would take the time to learn the night sky and have a deeper connection to the universe. If this is all you can afford and you're trying to desperately keep your budget around $200, then this would be a good telescope to start out with. 
but I still think that the best all around telescope and the best telescope for a beginner is a six or eight inch Dobsonian. And then it's worth hunting for on the used telescope market. And that's all I have to say about this telescope. I'll see y'all soon. Sula signing off.